Welcome to Court Killers Reckoning. The world of entertainment has been turned upside down, and we're just trying to find out how to watch what we want, where we want, whenever we want. I'm Tom Merritt, Brian Brushwood. Where is the good stuff? I'll tell you where it isn't is on Monday nights. It's at Saturday at 10 a.m. Where are your yes. favorite Saturday morning cartoon? <laughs> or as you said in the pre-show, uh, you know that that public service announcement show that comes on when the good cartoons are done? That's Cord Killers! <laughs> Coming on just after Turbo Teen and Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> uh, yes, teens. Now let's talk about being responsible. Where is everybody going? Uh, <laughs> Shall we move into a supply run? Yes. Supply run, supply run, supply run. The New York Times has discovered Brian's secret. Oh Regularly my God, I swear, I, I thought the camera was turned off. <laughs> Regularly canceling streaming services, Brian, not the other secret. Uh, the, the idea of canceling your streaming service when you're done watching a show and then subscribing to others in order to binge. Uh, Antenna estimates more than 25% of streaming subscribers have canceled three or more services over the last two years. And a third of people who cancel a streaming subscription resubscribe in the next six months. Antenna calls them serial churners and estimates they account for 40% of new subscriptions and cancellations. Uh, so this isn't people are canceling subscriptions, which I've seen somebody look at one part of this data and go, see, it's too expensive and streaming is bad and uh, we need something else that everybody's canceling. It's like, no, we're actually seeing a significant number of people go, well, I don't need this one anymore. Let me cancel that and subscribe to something else. But when my favorite show comes back to that other one, I'll go back. Yeah, this has been uh, the gospel that I've, I've preached. Uh, num number one, the way I've always framed it, just if you're new here, is I always tell people every three months, cancel literally every one of your services, all of them, all the way down. And then wait a day, two days, three days, four days. And the second you want something, just take it, just sign up again, or just get it. Um, and whether that means maybe you only want to watch one episode of something that's on HBO uh, or Max, uh, don't sign up for HBO. Consider, I don't know, maybe I'll just spend three whole dollars to own it on Amazon or Apple uh, TV Plus or something like that. And uh, I am certain that you end up saving money this way. Now, the the part of the justification for this, uh, uh, per Tom's comment, is that it's never been easier because we started this show back in the days when you were bound to a year-long contract with <laughs> landlines, uh, internet, and cable. Uh, two out of three are things you don't want. <laughs> and, then, uh, uh, and then it was difficult to get out of. And in general, it's been very easy. You just click a button and you're suddenly unsubscribed. But now that the industry is recognizing that people are kind of jumping in and out, the churners, as they put it, I wonder if we're going to see more obstacles, if it's going to get more complicated to unsubscribe, if, heaven forbid, maybe you'll get a cheaper rate if you sign up for a year-long contract uh, and then, you know, bundle a whole bunch of things. In other words, this sounds like the the devil cable in a new form <laughs> well it, it turns out that that cable cable didn't become the devil uh simply because it was started by the actual literal devil uh, <laughs> cable became the devil uh, because that's what good business is right uh, if you were running a business you would want to make as much money as possible so that you can improve the business and improve your standard of living right same reason you ask for a raise at work is the reason that a business person wants to make more money at their business and the pressures on cable were to keep people subscribed keep people from canceling especially because they didn't have any competition for most of their run uh and i think the pressures here will be the same so we're already seeing some of what brian just said Disney has a bundle, right? So that, well, I don't want to, I, I, I don't, I'm not watching anything on Disney plus, but I am watching something on Hulu. Maybe I shouldn't cancel the bundle. I don't want to cancel the whole bundle because I get a decent rate, right? It starts to put an impediment in there. So you're seeing more bundling. You're also seeing discounts. Max did exactly what you said, Brian, and was like, Hey, sign up for Max for a whole year and we'll give it to you at half price. What do you say? Uh, you can still cancel at any time, but you've already paid for a whole year at once. So it's, it's not exactly the discount, but it's like, getting you to commit to a longer term and i think we are going to see that do you think there are any pressures to stop them from the more abusive cable stuff 
which was locking you into a two-year contract or or you know trying to make it seem like you're getting it for cheaper and then adding fees on top any of that kind of stuff uh sorry your question was so poignant i sneezed twice uh there's nothing to sneeze at Brian. <laughs> Uh, I, I think that uh, that would be a radioactive practice on the internet where where negative attention spreads very, very fast. I, I don't think that they'll touch that third rail. Um, but I, I also, now I'm going to play devil's advocate against my position. Um, there might be something to not having to think about it all the time, where it's like, if you do you want to have to make a decision every month or every three months? or once a year. And if you make the once a year decision and end up coming out ahead and it's the cheapest of all of them, then maybe that's the right way to go. Yeah. And and I think the difference that I mentioned of no competition could make all the difference, right? Uh, if s the streaming services start to appear to be crossing the line and they're already getting heat right now, Right, streaming services are are not popular with people. Uh, there was a whole the whole thing we'll talk about later about that. Uh, but if they cross the line, people can decide to just not use them and use something else. It's not an all or nothing like it was with cable. Like, well, but if I cancel cable, that's the ultimate bundle because it's all of my channels and I all I have are broadcast channels. You can now be like, well, <laughs> it's, it's like on the one hand you have all of the awesome buffet of everything and everything you could ever want, or you have. PBS and maybe Fox. Like, <laughs> yeah, depending on, De depending on where you live and if your antenna can reach high enough. Yeah, I, so so I think the pressure of like, well, I guess I could drop Peacock because they're trying to lock me into a contract could keep streaming services from succeeding. Not trying, they'll try, but could keep them at six from succeeding at abusing the customer because you have choice in a way that you never did with cable. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've seen this one uh, bandied about as, as sort of evidence that that streaming is done or that, that oh. you know, the, the streaming model is broken. Uh, and to me, it feels like, no, this is the benefit of streaming is that you get to move around and you get to choose. And it's very difficult to have a monopoly. Uh, you are not going to see all of the major studios become one major studio. It's just not going to happen. Uh, and, well, and, and even if you do, they're all going to want to preserve their individual rights. Like, well, what if people only want, you know, this particular series? And it's like, well, yeah, but I, I guess what I'm saying is if 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 Paramount, Comcast, Disney, Apple, Amazon, Netflix all became one company, then they could do what cable did to you. But I feel like that's unlikely. I really don't think Apple, Amazon are going to become one company, uh, first of all. Uh, and I don't even think Disney and Comcast are, are going to become one company. That, uh, that you know, is less less unlikely. I and and uh, look, a lot of us have families. And uh, uh, I really love what I see you said in the chat. But, wait, I'm not trying to uh, instigate strife in anybody's household. But uh, <laughs> if you're the one in charge of things, uh, you know, don't maybe don't consult everyone and go to your 10 year old and say, Hey, do you want me to keep Netflix or not? Because I'll tell you what the answer is going to be. Uh, ICU said it annoys my wife, but she'll be like, why are we subscribed to Netflix? And I'll be all like, we've been unsubscribed for three months. You know, you just didn't <laughs> notice. Like, yeah. Is there something you want to watch on yeah. Netflix? Because we can sign back. right back up. <laughs> yeah. No, exactly. Uh, well, one thing that you should never cancel, though, uh, is Meals on Wheels. Weird Ami tried that. It didn't work out for him. And another one is our Patreon, patreon.com slash cord killers. Oh, heck yeah. You'll notice that we've got, uh, if you're watching the video version live over at twitch.tv slash night attack or uh, other places as well, um, the uh, uh, we're, we're doing production. We're going to talk all about it in the exclusive <gasps> after talk segment. And Tom, do we want to Talk about what's coming back, or do we want to save that? Ooh, what's coming? Well, well, I mean, what's coming back? Well, I mean, maybe I mean, just a tidbit, right? Just okay, a, well, uh, just a, a little segment, crumb. There, there was a time that we used to do spoiler in time, uh, and we would commit to watching live stuff that was coming out. But the problem was a lot of it was content that we thought was going to be good. And because we committed, we began to hate watch week after mm -hmm. week after week. And most of the premium prestige television happens to be on Sunday night, and we happen to record on Monday, which meant we were perpetually cramming 
with, uh, and, and then we had to have hot takes on three different series at any given times or if a movie came out or whatever. And that's why part of why we pivoted in the uh, second part of this program, the spoiler in time, uh, to what we call the full experience. F first, uh, ultimate, uh, either lowest or loser and last. Uh, basically, the first episode, the highest rated, lowest, lowest rated, and then the final episode of various series. But... Uh, we're going to bring back regular spoiler in time. We're going to talk about what we're into and 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 give in depth both first spoiler free, and then at the end of after talk, we're going to declare flatly, starting now, it's all spoilers. There will be nothing entertaining for you that does not involve spoilers starting now. So you could drop off at that moment, and. Uh, I'm really excited about it. That's exclusively available to patrons, uh, patreon.com slash cord killers. We're also expanding. We're giving everything a spit polish. We got a, uh, 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 we have Amos running the boards now. Uh, we're, it's very, very exciting. Stuff is going out on time. I couldn't be happier. Please help us expand and grow and spread the word to your friends, patreon.com slash cord killers. So to reiterate, if you're the kind of person who really just wants to know, what are you watching this week? I will watch it and then I will listen. Full experience. And it's going to be a tour of the greatest of television. If you're somebody who's like, you know, I don't really care about keeping up. I just want to hear what y'all are watching. I love hearing your opinions after talk. Uh, and as Brian said, we'll be very clear in after talk when we're about to be spoilery and we won't put anything after the spoilers that you'll miss. So go check it out. Become a patron now better than ever. Patreon.com slash cord killers. Amos, make the search party happen. So oh, that God, if recall, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that if movie, uh, Brian, uh, that Ryan Reynolds and John Krasinski are doing. John Krasinski, I think, wrote it. Uh, it's about imaginary friends. Hence, if uh, I think Remember he also movie? directed it. If I'm, if I'm, yeah, correct. I think he directed it too. But you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, whole yeah, yeah. big uh, CG monster, and yeah, it's finally coming out May 17th, and uh, looks like it might open to 40 million dollars. That's that almost sounds like normal. Do you remember normal? Yeah. <laughs> it was it was half a decade ago, but I still remember it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's got Ryan Reynolds, right? So it's not like, oh, it's an indie with with no names in it or anything, but it's not a franchise. It's not, you know, another in a series or based on the hit selling book. Uh it's it's an original concept, original movie opening for forty million dollars. And and I, I've seen a lot of in movie industry insiders noting that and like, wow, this one looks like it's uh, gonna bring the families back to the theaters. I am I am holding my breath that uh, that if enough movies come back and are good, it's a bit unfortunate that we had to have a giant writer strike and an actor strike in the minute just after the pandemic. Yeah. But I am holding my breath that maybe in a year we can finally get back to having the summer movie draft. Oh, where we can, that'd be so good. Where we can yeah. handicap uh, blockbusters. Indeed. Uh, speaking of kids stuff, Bluey has been bluing it out of the water for Disney+. Plus. <laughs> Uh, the episode The Sign debuted on Disney Plus April 14th. After seven days of viewing, 10.4 million views worldwide. It is the largest seven-day premiere audience for any Disney Junior episode. So it, it doesn't beat like Marvel stuff and Star Wars stuff. But uh, it is also the biggest episode for Bluey ever on Disney+. Plus. Uh, and apparently, Disney doesn't give these rankings out, but they were willing to say that Bluey is always in the top five of all Disney Plus series. And, and uh, so the fact that it's a Disney Junior show, I, I just had a profound moment uh, uh, for myself. My children have all officially aged out of the Disney Junior demographic. Wow. I have no idea what a Bluey is. <laughs> For the first time, I now have a gaping black hole between age zero to 10 entertainment. That's amazing. Well, my nieces, thankfully, are filling the gap for you. Uh, they are four and seven, so I am quite familiar <laughs> with Bluey. Uh, and uh, it's, it's funny. You should actually go check, just check out an episode. Uh, it's Australian. And it's like a family of dogs. And there's, in fact, just go look up banned episodes of Bluey because Whoa. Disney Plus has had to like remove some from its catalog and edit some for US audiences because it gets, for kids stuff, edgy sometimes. Uh, <laughs> they, they have the same like uh, Australian proclivity for the C word or something. <laughs> it's like, I did not quite I'm that edgy, uh, but but there's, there's an episode where uh, the dad pretends to give birth and it gets really gr 
graphic. It's all stuffed animals and stuff. But like some people were like, that's over the line. You can't do you can't show that even in, if it's pretend. Uh, there's, there's, it's a great show. It's really it's really funny, too. Right on. Uh, Jennifer Aniston is teaming up with her co-producer to make a nine to five movie for 20th Century Studios. So just a, a reboot for the modern era, basically, of the 80s classic. So that's definitely a prime, uh, you know, Not Amazon chip prime. property that you know to be reimagined. I'm I'm certain it, it it'll make money, but but nine to five was was uh, number one. It had peak superstar uh, Dolly Parton and uh, like everybody at the top of their game. Number Jane two, Fonda, Lily Tomlin, yeah, right, and, and you know it had Dabney Coleman at his peak uh, villainous masculinity phase. It right. was also at a time where everybody resonated with the idea of nine to five and everybody had the shared uh, hatred for the for the casual misogyny uh, for the for the underpayment for the treatment of women as separate from men. Um, and it was a story of empowerment and so on. I I am very curious what the whether or not number one, whether or not in the USA, there are those shared monoculture touchstones still. And if there are, what they would be. Um, I don't think the culture was as mono as we may remember it, uh, because I recall people thinking 9 to 5 was a horrible movie uh, and should never have been made. There there was there was much resistance, uh, mostly among men, uh, to the depictions in 9 to 5. Uh, and Jane Fonda was a very divisive character, having protested the Vietnam War and been arrested. Uh, so... I feel like I get why you would make a nine to five movie now for the same reasons it was made in the eighties, uh, except you're going to have different themes. You're going to have the me too movement. You're going to be, have women's pay. It's, it has to be told differently, but a lot of the cultural clash that was happening in the eighties mirrors cultural class. Now I will say that there was more of a mainstream culture in the 80s than there is now right there was a more of a common common touchstone so that the resistance didn't manifest itself as a twitter campaign <laughs> or or anything like that so you may be right that this isn't this isn't going to be as widely accepted perhaps but i get i get why the strands are there i get why someone like jennifer aniston would look at it and go you know what we could tell nine to five with modern themes because there are a lot of people feeling about women in the workplace now the way people were feeling about women in the workplace in the 80s the biggest impediment to me is like who works nine to five is isn't everybody working from home in these office jobs now well and uh uh yeah i i don't know i i fear that we'll see zoom calls and and uh, have to hear descriptions of twitter backlashes and you know, uh, I, I'll be interested to see also yeah. what talent gets recruited on it because the superstardom of everybody in nine to five can't cannot be overstated. Um, and I, I, I just want—I don't know. Uh, Who are the I, equivalents I, to Dolly Parton, Lily Tomlin, and Jane Fonda? Right? Like, I, right. Dude, at peak Dolly Parton, yeah. Lily Tomlin, and Jane Fonda. <laughs> well, obviously, you get Dolly Parton, Lily Tomlin, and Jane Fonda to appear in it. <laughs> By the way, are still <laughs> doing great. <laughs> yeah, they're all working and acting. Uh, and in fact, Lily Tomlin and Jane Fonda uh, did a Netflix series together that was hugely popular. Uh, Dolly Parton appeared on Beyonce's album. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I think that's a that's a no-brainer and obviously they would play a mentor role probably a cameo thing you know something like that but yeah i'm i'm curious i'm curious this is this is a curious one for all the reasons that, that you suggest uh there's also a sandman spinoff out now uh if if you haven't seen it on netflix called dead boy detectives uh the variety review was damning with faint praise basically <laughs> saying Sand but half the variety review was telling us how great sandman was and then going dead boy detectives isn't as good yeah uh sandman uh number one i know we talked about it on the show and i know it's one of those oh i oughta it it, it was an oh i oughta category but when i read it it said netflix sandman i was like sandman came out on netflix and i was just like that's it. it reminded apparently, you yeah apparently it wasn't <laughs> <laughs> that important to me but uh but i guess uh whereas sandman took it a little more seriously the uh uh this one seems to be a more wackety schmackety uh kind of show 
And 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 they spent less money on it. The production values are are not as good, according to Variety. Anyway, I haven't seen it. Um, to me, that makes sense, right? This is the this is the younger brother uh, of the Sandman. So I, if you're really into it and you really like those characters and you want to see the spinoff, uh, it's there for you, right? It feels like one that's not meant to be everybody watch, you know, Keystone programming. It's more, hey, super fans of the Sandman, here's more in that universe. Yeah. Uh, this one caught my eye because it's an exclusive piece of video available for physical media, which means you'll get it on YouTube and BitTorrent. But if you want to buy the actual <laughs> Blu-ray, uh, you will get a look at how Lucasfilm has explored, uh, the, uh, or, or a look at how the Lucasfilm creative team built the back to tank and prepared Hayden Christensen for playing Darth Vader slash Anakin Skywalker, uh, underwater without using an oxygen regulator. Uh, you know what is interesting is uh, uh, I saw just in the wild, I, I got served up a, a, a similar piece about Andor. You know, it was a snippet mm -hmm. from, from the extra features. And I think this is very astute marketing where it's like in a world where we could get 4K over a stream uh, and in a world where presumably we fell in love with these things because we already have Disney+. Plus then, uh, you know, why why would you buy a Blu-ray? And the answers are twofold. You already have a PlayStation, which would, you know will play a Blu-ray. And number two, you theoretically will not be able to see this stuff anywhere else. And so by doing this continuous leak of, was this about a, like a minute and a half long clip, Tom? Yeah, yeah, the the one that was that was made public, yeah. Right, so uh, the, similarly, there was about a minute and a half on the Andor one uh, where, and so... I, I think that's um, – it's not a ringing endorsement that is going to cause me to run out to my local Best Buy or Circuit City to go buy one of these, but it is – No, you order on Amazon. If, 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 you're a, uh, if you're a completionist, you at least know that you, you could take this to your you know cabin without internet or, or put it in the car, and you know, you'll justify it because, oh, well, the kids will want to watch it or, or – whatever and then but at least i'll get to see all of these featurettes and the featurette uh, that i saw for andor looked fine no this is this is great uh it is if you're if in your head you're going like well how many people are really going to buy this just to watch it tom just said you're going to be able to get it elsewhere uh i don't think that's the pitch the pitch here is see this clip you can get it on the blu-ray and that will make you look at the blu-ray and realize oh i get a physical thing to put on my shelf that i can look at and people can see oh you're into andor and uh, it will have a photo book in it and then liner notes and like that's the appeal of blu-ray these days is you're getting a collectible right and the blu-ray is part of that collectible uh i've noticed that concert dvds uh, and Blu-rays haven't gone away, but what I have noticed with a lot of Korean groups is they will sell you a digital version with a box. Right. So you get the box with the photo books and the ancillary stuff you can put on your shelf, but it doesn't even have the disc in it. You get the digital files of all the content. So it really is, I think that just illustrates, it really is about the collectible aspect of it. And, and this exclusive clip is just a little spice for that. Yep. Uh, and, and there is something uh, I'm, I'm even going to double down and say there's, there's real value in having a physical something, you know, it's like, um, when, when we go to events, uh, sometimes, uh, like when I'm at DEF CON, uh, some people like, uh, oh, you know, I, I, I oh, wait, there are scam school books. I'd love all of them. And yeah. it's like, well, uh, here they are on a DVD and they're all like, I will never put a DVD in. And they're like, I'm like, yes, but if you give me $5, I can hand this to you and you'll see there's a code on the back <laughs> where you will read them. <laughs> but uh, uh, there, there is something about the physical media that does matter for the collector and somebody who wants to, like, for example, right now you're set. I'm looking at, I, I love walking into other people's libraries and see, it's like a peek into their mind. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like like uh, on your lower left, I see the 2600 magazines, you know, so I know you're familiar with old school hacker culture and Star Wars. It gives a, a common language to speak the moment you walk into somebody's space. Yeah, we actually talked about uh, a, a study that was done on this uh, on Good Day Internet uh, earlier this month. 
Uh, and there were some findings that said that psychologically, people don't feel as bound to their digital stuff. And yeah, part of it is DRM and, and the idea that it could be taken away. Uh, but, uh, but most of it is it's not tangible. I don't see it. I can't touch it. I can't show it off to others. And when I go to somebody's house, I don't look through their Spotify playlist, you know, but I do right. look at what CDs they might have on the shelf. So there's, there's definitely something to that. Yeah. And speaking of, let's tell you some of the buried treasure we've found. Most people want to know why they oh, no. got rich. Oh no, that was, buried it was a tee up. Oh no. <laughs> what? What, oh, what's the... We just got the last half of it. It's fine. No, I saw the whole thing. It all, it all worked on my end. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's weird. Uh, we'll talk about that later. Meanwhile, Brian, what have you been watching? Uh, you know what? <laughs> okay, I got a dumb one. Uh, I was thinking about like, what is the thing I've watched recently? Because uh, I've been busy enough that uh, outside of our um, full experience stuff, which I can't wait to talk about. Uh, I was thinking about how I fell into a series of 20 minute video essays and I try, I, I spent too much time trying to figure out which one it was and where it was. There's a dude who does good 20 minute think pieces uh, and explains things. And I don't know if it's the New York times or the wall street journal, because I like to balance my diet and have both crazy left and crazy right in there. But I fell into a rabbit hole of these 20 minute essays. I know that it like cuts to the guy sitting at a desk and he's oftentimes holding up papers or something, but mainly they're very high fidelity graphics and they explain things like why California needs to rework its zoning laws to end the housing problem because everybody, you know, the nimbyism of single family households in uh, particular zones incentivizes uh people to not create multifamily units or you, know, you sent that one to heaton right uh, uh oh, oh <laughs> yes. if i could find it i certainly would <laughs> yeah <laughs> but, yeah so, so oh right you need help finding him uh yes i need help cord killers at gmail.com number one it's either new york times or wall street journal the mere fact that I thought it was good and balanced probably means it's Wall Street Journal. I don't know. Uh, I know it's a dude who uh, 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 they're about 20 minutes long and there's a whole series of them. And they 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 all appear to be evergreen. They don't appear to be of the hysteria of any particular news cycle moment. But I don't know the guy's name and I don't know which newspaper. I hope this was very helpful for everyone at home. <laughs> yeah. look, Go go look at the New York Times video essays and the Wall Street Journal essays uh, and uh, report back. Thanks, everybody. Uh, one of those will be great for you, according to Brian. <laughs> uh, I want to recommend uh, the recent K-drama that we just started. It's about five, no, six episodes in called Lovely Runner. This is available on Viki. Uh, and I know those are a little more problematic for folks because more, more people have Netflix than Vicky, although you can watch a lot of stuff for free on Vicky. Uh, but Vicky also doesn't do dubs. So you're going to have to watch subtitles, which I know counts a lot of folks out. But uh, if it doesn't count you out, check out Lovely Runner. It is a time travel story that is, I'm going to just say, very cheesy very like typical lovey romance story, but has the best time travel rules of any of these I've watched. Uh, what happens is there's a woman in the future or in the present uh, who has had an accident and can't walk. Uh, she has a musician that she's a huge fan of uh, who at her lowest moment randomly calls her as part of this TV promotion uh, and gives her hope and so she becomes a huge fan, but then that musician kills themselves and she is devastated. She has bought on, on like eBay, his watch and the watch suddenly sends her back in time to high school where not only she, can she walk, but he's alive and he happens to go to the same high school as her, which she knew, but she never knew him when she was a kid. So she seeks him out and here's where the time travel rules come in. Whenever she says something about the future, time stops and no one can hear her. And oh, so it so it's basically like a uh, um uh censorship. <laughs> it's it's yeah, a, it's it's like the physical future. universe is like no 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 no, you can't do that. You cannot give people insight into the future. 
not only does that stop her from affecting the the past, but it also is a superpower. So when she's trying to sneak out of her boyfriend's dad's house without him seeing her, she just starts shouting, Obama becomes president. Uh, <laughs> the Korea wins the gold in 2010 until she gets out of the house. That's amazing. Uh, I love that. It, it reminds me of a very short hop here. There was a young adult fiction book I read when I was like in seventh grade where a little girl teleports or, go, you know, she closes her eyes and is able to go back 100 years. And the rules were like, well, you can do you, you can affect the past, but you you probably won't. And so there's this moment that she looks at a vase and she reaches her hands for her. She's like, no, oh, that's a real pretty vase. But uh -huh. I could if I wanted. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, it, it plays by that time travel rule, which is one of my favorites. I still like a time travel story that violates that rule, and they do all the time. But I was very impressed by that. Uh, and and it's a it's a pretty you know it's got stakes because she's basically trying to save this guy's life without being able to tell him because of this principle that he's going to kill himself in the future. And the question is, can she still change the future somehow? So that is called Lovely Runner, and it is available on Viki. If you've got something we should be on the lookout for, give us an email, cordkillers at gmail.com. Or if you want to solve my mystery, chase my white rabbit for me. Who yes, that too. I liked. <laughs> but it, I, I actually do have something this week, uh, and it's very, very timely if, if you're listening over the weekend. We said it's only a 24-hour sale but it, it'll it, it will probably extend it to tomorrow but uh we've got this uh this uh this pen called the lockproof pen that uh it, it basically it is a, a fine pen uh it's got this crenulation crown on top so that uh, you can use it as a self-defense tool like if somebody you know you're walking in the night somebody approaches you you just kind of chunk it in their head and it's going to take out you know pieces of dna in their scalp wow. <laughs> and probably get them to, to leave you alone uh, it also has, uh, if you pop it off, you know how uh, uh, it, uh, the tempered glass on cars uh, requires a very, very fine point, a little diamond point to shatter it. It'll it'll pop glass. And if you twist it open, you can pull it open and there's a set of emergency lock picks in there. Oh, wow. um, normally, this uh, we list it at 40. Usually, we have it at 35. As far as I know, like they stopped, uh, the manufacturer stopped making them a few years ago. So it took us like two years before we got a run just for ourselves and we keep them on sale at like $35 and we're pretty consistent with that for, for years. But, uh, but I don't know about you, Tom, but uh, turns out hosting a five months in a five year event, like an eclipse event, a bit expensive. And, uh, mm. and, and it has me in a place where I'm looking around like, okay, okay, what do we got a lot of? <laughs> Buy some pens folks. <laughs> We have, we have enough of the lockproof pens that we are offering it legitimately at the lowest price we've ever done, uh, $18.99 for just the pen. So uh, that is that is what, just over half price of, of even the sale price. It's well below the, the retail price, but that's at scamstuff.com, gear for the modern rogue. Just look up the lockproof pen and it should for the next 48 hours still be at that price. Uh, it, this is one of those things where I, I'd rather have, we won't, I'm not making much money on any of these, but I need the liquidity right now because there are people I need to pay. <laughs> yeah. G James B in chat says, says they have one. Uh, haven't used it as a pen yet. But... <laughs> oh, uh, it is kind of counterintuitive. Uh, yeah. uh, send me an email and I'll, I'll send you a video. Uh, it, it also comes with a tactical flashlight, but basically nice. It looks like, oh dear, there's no pen on this. But then if you just grab one part and yank it, it'll pop open. You know, it like, even oh. works as a pen. Go check yeah. it out, folks. Yes. Uh, where do they go again? Uh, uh, scamstuff.com. Fantastic. Send a scanning to a board. Scanning the horizon! Looks like Paramount might be close to its merger with Skydance Media in May if they can work out all the details. Uh, the biggest issue is a carriage deal with Charter that still needs to be signed. At the same time, though, they may be complicating the deal. The Wall Street Journal reports that Paramount might let go of CEO Bob Bakish. He was the CEO of Paramount before they merged with CBS and became the CEO of the combined company that's now called uh, Paramount. They would, according to the Wall Street Journal sources, replace him on an interim basis with a committee called the Office of the CEO. You know, okay. Yeah. But 
I don't can't tell Brian if that's a holdup for the merger or possibly a requirement. I mean, you know, Bob Bakish can be a divisive character, and maybe uh, maybe Skydance is like, and you do something about him before we buy it. Well, um, uh, m- a minor spoiler for Fallout: there's a there's a time when a, an overseer of a vault becomes unavailable, and they sort of have three people kind of filling in for a little bit until they can figure out who the real overseer is going to be. Sure. This kind of sounds like that kind of situation where it's yeah. just like, you know, we don't have a superstar. We're, we're not going to solicit uh rock star talent from another company, but we could at least like, this is something we all agree on. Like a team will fill this office until we figure out like who's made of the right stuff. Yeah. The, the question is, do you make that? Why do you make that move when you're about to merge with another company? Uh, it's, it's counterintuitive to think like, Hey, if you like your CEO and he's doing great, why would you get rid of him? Also the CEO isn't quitting. It's not like he's leaving. Those would be the two situations where like, well, we're about to merge anyway. Let's just have an office of the CEO. Right. He he is not, he is neither of those things. So that leaves me to believe that they don't want him involved in the merger somehow. Uh, that that could be. I, it could also be maybe Skydance is hesitant about his le- leadership, and so yep. this would be a way to well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Their, their flexibility. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you said the, um, yeah, that, yeah, I thought you. Okay, yeah. That yeah, that Skydance is like you know we wouldn't. Can we just not have him there? Uh, pay him off. You know, give him all his stock. Give him his golden parachute, and then you don't put a new CEO in yet because we want to name that person or we will be that person, right? The CEO or of Skydance. We want meaningful my... input on, yeah, on yeah. who we like, and yeah, exactly. Um, Comcast had its earnings report, uh, and you know we know most of you listening to this show aren't, aren't here for the earnings per share and the EBITDA, uh, but the things that we do like to track: broadband customers down. I mean, TV customers down too. We're not even looking at that number anymore. But broadband customers for Comcast down sixty-five thousand. Peacock subscribers up three million to a total of thirty-four million. Hey, remember what everybody was just frothing at the mouth about how net neutrality laws needed to be enacted because there's only one possible way to get broadband and that's your cable provider. Uh, that's that's looking like uh, not the case anymore. Looks like people got options. I still only have power. one. You always bring this up because you happen to live in a place that has choices. I have one choice for no, broadband you, cable in this location. That's it. Have, that's all have, I've got. You have Starlink. You have. Uh, I don't have Starlink. Uh, uh, not uh, at the, not at a speed that it, that would and latency that would work for me. Absolutely not. You have yeah, LTE though. I do. I do have LTE, but also not on a speed and a latency that would work for me. I, I have one wired high speed cable option. Well, or one wired high speed option. Uh, and and yes. Uh, I'm so in the yeah, I take your point, which is like a normal person who just needs the internet does have more choices. Uh, yes, but but also like uh, I'm speaking from a Comcast broadband line where I pay for the business or the I guess it's Spectrum, but uh, it's Spectrum, uh, yeah, same here. Yeah. That that yeah. rely in the backup. Now AT and T. To your point, AT and T fiber is creeping ever closer to me. They keep sending me things that are like, "We're coming to your neighborhood," and then I look it up, and they're not in my neighborhood. So there is more competition, uh, and Comcast is feeling that. I think you're right. Uh, good news, Brian. They just voted to re-implement net neutrality guidance rules that. that will reclassify internet service providers as common carriers. Oh, now, is, I have, yeah. I have two things to say about that. One. I think common carrier is closer to what an internet service provider is than information provider. Uh, information provider says, you're like cable, you choose what people get. Uh, common carrier is, you're like a telephone, you're just carrying the signal and people decide on the other end who they wanna call and who they wanna talk to. Well, Neither one of them are actually appropriate for the internet. We need a new classification for the internet, but if I had to choose, I'd choose common carrier. The other thing I'll say, Brian, is that the classifications now that we've run the experiment in real time don't seem to make much of a difference because we've changed from common carrier in the 90s to information provider through most of the 2000s and early teens to common carrier under the Obama administration to information provider under the Trump administration. And now we're switching back to common carrier. Uh, It turns out public pressure is more of a factor than these guidances. Uh, But I think I think 
the the Congress needs to weigh in on this. I well, don't think they will, but I think that's that's what needs to happen is to say, no, no, the internet has some elements of information provider and informations of common carrier, and this is how you regulate it. Uh, I may be misremembering some of these numbers, but the sentiment I'm certain is correct. Uh, I read an article that uh, indicated that the public thirst for net neutrality if uh, to the extent that there, that there still is a passionate one is far far weaker uh, uh first round of net neutrality there were petitions with quarter million signatures uh on there and and this time it's like 60,000 um it uh uh, uh the big uh, like and when you look back at it it seems a little silly like things people were getting really upset about was that T-Mobile said if you buy our thing you can none of this counts towards your bandwidth cap and it's right. like ah oh, that's terrible it's like wait them charging you less is terrible and then and people could be, well like, because and i actually get that argument which is you are now choosing winners t-mobile is saying uh you have all of these streaming providers to choose from but if you use this streaming provider that we're a partner with it won't count against your data and that starts to shovel people towards that one uh and and affects the the playing ground that, yeah, that was it, the it, argument of why that was bad it feels uh which again also seems kind of silly now the fact that microsoft was just decried and people had animated gifs of Bill Gates turning into the devil because for the crime of giving away a free browser, you know, uh, with, with, with windows. So, uh, uh, I, I don't know. It's, I think you're right. I think, uh, neither one is correct. Uh, I think everybody is creating straw men for the other side. Uh, yeah. all I know is that, uh, things seem to be getting better and better and better and and it's been fine and, and that oh, that wow. you're right about that you, the, there are more choices in more places uh than than you've ever had before in the in the united states and if you're outside the united states uh i hope you can hear us over your laughter uh but yes that is the situation that that we're in now and it's and it's improving uh, the fact that people are not upset about this net neutrality thing might not be a great thing in general, though, because there's a Stop Online Piracy Act starting to be pushed by the Motion Picture Association. Uh, that is something that also caused protests and and blackouts, you know, websites taking down their front page for a day. Uh, and then the Motion Picture Association floating back out there has caused almost no reaction. Uh, and it's the same bill, which is like, we want to be able to legally take down a website if we uh, think it is doing piracy. Uh, and, and you'd think uh, people would be upset about that. Turns out we are in a climate where people are upset about too many other things for them to get as upset about these as they used to be. Well, and there, there's also protest fatigue on certain issues. Like, like I don't know. Uh, there, there are things that I disagree with, um, uh, you know, like, I don't know, like, let's say vaping bans. You know, <laughs> the science seems to indicate that if you're a smoker and you move to vaping, you just added 10 years to your life. Uh, and, you know, all, all of this making it difficult for smokers to trans. Anyway. But but also I don't have the patience or time to really do or say yeah, anything about yeah, it. There's, <laughs> there's too much. Uh, final thing here, CableTV.com's Olivia Bono uh, wrote a piece called Streaming Fatigue. Is it the beginning of the end for on-demand streaming? Uh, and uses a bunch of, of stats to show that streaming services are not popular. When you ask people like, which do you like this? Do you not like this? Uh, the reason they're not popular is because of price hikes, uh, canceling shows, crackdowns on password, frustration with ads in previously ad-free content like Amazon Prime Video. Uh, and the effect has been a drop in subscribers uh, and move to fast, free ad-supported television. I have a few issues with this with this write up. Uh, mostly, it's stuff we've talked about on Cord Killers for years now. So you're not if you've been listening to the show, you're not going to find a lot of surprises here. Uh, it's not shocking to me that services are not very popular because they are now the leaders. And when you're the leaders, you you suddenly have to be perfect, or the public gets upset at you. Uh, it seems to be arguing two sides of the coin when you say people hate these ads, so they're going to free stuff that has ads. Uh, and, uh, to me, it sounds like, oh, we have more streaming services than ever before. People are realizing that they don't need to subscribe to all of them uh, in order to stay entertained. And in fact, the fast services are showing you don't have to pay at all to get some pretty good content. Yeah, it's... um. 
It's also, I think that uh, 10 years ago, if you ask people, what do you think of Netflix? All they would think of is like, oh my God, so much better than, uh, you know, cable or, oh my God, they, I love stranger things or what have you. Now we're at a place where people remember the shows that they love, but man, there are, there are shows that I love that I can't for the life of me tell you what service they're on because I, all I know is this service is annoying because it says it's ad free, but then puts ads in this other service is annoying because it's UI interfaces doesn't work with this browser and my experience. So I think there's a, a, a cognitive bias to remember the things that you don't like about streaming services and not remember uh, the, not keep track of the selection of things that they have that you really like. Yeah, yeah. There's a weird psychological thing going on with Netflix, too. Uh, and I've heard people I, I very much respect say, uh, I remember when Netflix, the promise was you could get everything for one low price. Uh, and I'm like, that's nostalgia. First of all, Netflix never promised that. They might have let you believe it for their marketing, which is, you know, that makes them somewhat culpable. But there is, in fact, more selection on Netflix now than there has ever been. And, and, and by what people say, you would think they used to have everything and now they don't and charge more. And it's, it's not the same. What it was, was Netflix was the only one doing it. And you would be delightfully surprised to find things on it. Be like, oh my gosh, it has this and it has that. It has friends. It has this. Uh, rather than now where they have more than back then, but it's not surprising to find things. So you're looking for a thing in particular. You're right. not going in open-minded and going, look at all the stuff they have. You're saying, do they have this? Oh, or they took something away. Oh, they don't have friends anymore. <laughs> Used to be good. It's a psychological thing that I yeah, think is, uh, is a problem. It, it's a real problem for Netflix perception. Yeah. And I don't know if you would think of this as a hedonistic treadmill where you keep wanting it to get better and better at the pace that you, you know, like the, 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 oh, yeah, the excitement wears off over time. Uh, or, or if it's a case of anchoring where it's like, you remember the feeling of just, it's everything, it's everything. And then you find out that there's, it, it, that it never was anything or everything. It just felt like it for a little bit. It's a bit like the Gartner hype cycle. Have you ever heard of that? No, tell me about that. Uh, so, so in the early days of technology, it's all hype, 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 uh, because it can do something that was never done before. Then it's over promising like and because it can do that it can do everything then it disappoints because it can't do everything and it plummets uh and and people are like that thing's over it doesn't work at all uh and then it starts to balance out as people start to use it and go but it actually is really good at this and then you know it it evens out and it either fails or or becomes like a, a commodity uh that everybody uses for what it's good for tell me more about those apple goggles <laughs> yeah, we are definitely coming down from that peak with the uh, Apple Vision uh, Pro for sure. All right, let's check the chatter. You've got mail. Mr. Bates versus the Post Office is airing on PBS stations in the U.S. and Ulrike would like you to know about it. Uh, it's a four episode drama series about the Horizon IT scandal in the United Kingdom. Two most recent episodes can also be streamed for free on your local PBS website in the U.S. or the PBS Passport app, which is available on Roku, your smartphone, etc. Other episodes will require a PBS membership. You just donate to PBS. Uh, you can find it at pbs.org slash show slash Mr. Dash Bates dash verse dash the dash post dash office. Thank you so much, Ulrika. Uh, also, Glenn Hopper writes in to tell us, uh, to ask us, have you guys watched the South Park, the streaming wars two-part episode? It's hilarious. Uh, I'll definitely check that out. Um, if you don't know, one thing that we love is to discover new content brought to you, brought to us by you guys. So hit us up at cordkillers at gmail.com with your suggestions. And Marlon said, one other thing I thought of this week, I download Cord Killers from the Video Cord Killers podcast feed. Is there another location to get those from? Those downloads take forever. Not kidding. I think number 498 this week took between one and two hours. Uh, well, a couple things there. Uh, the video feed of Cord Killers 
is sort of a provided for free at your convenience uh, through archive.org. So we upload the, the, the video files to archive.org, which wants us to do that because it's their job to archive everything on the internet, but also it's not their job to serve video podcasts. Uh, and so sometimes it's, it's very slow. We also might not be encoding these as efficiently as we can, so Amos is definitely looking at that to see if we can get it down. Uh, but but for now, uh, your mileage may vary. Your other options would be to watch it on YouTube uh, because we do upload those to YouTube all the time. Uh, granted, those aren't available offline unless you have a paid subscription to YouTube Premium, but that's that's the other option we have for, for now anyway. Uh, but also things are changing and they're getting better faster uh, than they have in a very long time. We're very, very excited about this next chapter. Indeed. Thank you, everyone. Our website is cordkillers.com. Our email address is cordkillers at gmail.com. We are live on twitch.tv slash night attack, usually Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. I reckon we'll talk to you next time. Bye. Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>